Hello and welcome to another edition of Dragons, Unicorns, and Other Creative Creatures. My co-hostess, Rona Gottstein. <laughs> and I am Kevin Ross Emery. And we welcome you to, again, yet another edition of Dragons, Unicorns, and Other Creative Creatures. This show was created to support, promote, and share artistry of all kinds. Rona ha is a published author. I am. Uh, and, and you are published as well, but create endlessly. Yeah, I actually, I've got the poetry, I've got the books, I've got classes, content, stuff like that, and then I've got the movie. Yep. So I got the movie out and uh, lots of songs and all sorts of stuff. But you are also an uber creative. I am. In addition to the books, I run the Writer's Business School, which helps writers to sell their product once they've gotten themselves published. And... Uh, um, I work out of the Western Avenue studios in Lowell so that I can be surrounded by more uber creatives because there's nothing the muse likes more than connecting with others. And I work out of the Wolf Healing Center in Hudson, New Hampshire with my business partner, Angie Dionju. Uh, and you may catch us at the Web of Light show, uh, also aired here through Hudson Public Access. Okay. So we decided that we were going to add in because you always have fun shoes. So talk about today's I do. shoes. These are my. I love these. These were these were Look a thrifting these. pair. These are a thrifting uh, find. They're purple. The zip ups. They have a little sparkle because I love my sparklies. Um, I'm part magpie. Unless unicorns like sparklies, in which case I'm definitely part unicorn. Yeah, yeah. And you're mermaids and all those other creatures yeah. that do like the sparklies. So yeah, these were a great thrift find. My older son does a lot of thrifting. Um, and uh, I've gotten into the, I've gotten bitten by the thrifting bug. Oh my, yes. hopefully it's not contagious. I right? don't think so, so far so good. Does it create, <laughs> does it create a rash? Uh, no, Only no. On the credit card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> retail therapy. See, that, that's something I am, I am f a fully trained, self trained, self taught retail therapist because it's very good for both the emotional and economic welfare yeah. of the world, yes. And though I have a incredible set of different shoes and boots and all this stuff, I decided that my thing is going to be my socks. I love my socks. <laughs> so these are just my, my, my plums. These are my, these are my plums that I wear. And now, because we're both big coffee drinkers. Yes, every morning. The children know, do not talk to the mom until... Until coffee has happened. Until coffee has happened. So we also decided that every week we're going to do some fun coffee mugs. So yes, do I, I'm, I'm on a follow your heart kick this morning. Um, in addition to the caffeine, and it's uh, it's definitely something that that speaks to me. You know, I've mentioned the Wizard of Oz, which is a follow the yellow brick road, but she is looking for her heart's desire. So follow your heart is my message for today. There you go. And my message for today is make today amazing. I love that. And, and gold, uh, it's, you know, more sparkle. Well, you know, a little more sparkle here. <laughs> so since I have it in my hand, I might as well not wait. Yeah, for really, definitely um, not. But, you know, I think that this is especially true for people who are trying to make a living in art mm. and with their artistry. Um, but we all have the ability to a certain extent, but I think that artists really have to stay focused in making today amazing because there's a big up and down. There's an emotional roller coaster, especially if you're Huge. trying to make a living on the arts. And you can do it. You absolutely do it. And people do it every day. Yes. But for people who are starting up or maybe working, you know, multiple ways... Um, the, uh, you know, it's, it, it definitely has a bit of a thrill ride to it. It's an ongoing thing. You can't just make the art and hope it will find a buyer, a reader, nope. a seller, a watcher, a reviewer. There is business to be done, and you have to find ways to make that exciting and creative and motivating. Otherwise, nobody gets to see this incredible work, and that's unfortunate and a loss. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, if somebody discovers you in whatever your field is, you may end up with an agent or a manager mm -hmm. or somebody to do it. But I think that every artist has to be willing to wear two hats. They need to be both the pimp and the prostitute. <laughs> you know? You know, sometimes there's just no better way to say it than that. <laughs> well, you know. There really isn't, but you do. And, and business isn't a dirty word, and selling isn't a dirty word. Because it, it, you're not selling. You're connecting somebody to your creation. You're, you know, it's created an emotional bridge between you, the creator, and them, the receiver. Absolutely. So we always start our show um, when, uh, if you didn't see uh, our earlier shows, 
I didn't like what I was finding that was written about dragons. Mm, or unicorns. Or unicorns. I didn't like dragons because it made them all seem magical but mean. And I didn't like unicorns because they'd gone over to the dark side and they were all like, you know. Saw some this weekend on leggings. They were so cute. Okay. You would have hated them. Yeah. <laughs> when I say unicorns gone to the dark side, it's that they've just gotten too cutesy. These were very cutesy. So, um, so you said Horrifyingly the... cutesy. <laughs> so, uh, one of the mandates I give all my clients, you've heard me say this tons of times before, is part of our job as humans is we are creators. We are creators. We're yeah. co creators. We're recreators. So, if something does not exist in the world the way you want it, it is your job to create it. Mm -hmm. You live, you breathe, you create, get mm -hmm. out of your own way. So um, I'm going to read the quote I created to, for dragons, right. and then you're going to do unicorns. I'll do unicorns. And then we'll introduce today's guest. How's All that? Right. Sounds there good. There we go. Our inner dragons are both our passions, loves, need to create, and desires to fulfill our greatness, as well as our angers, frustrations, lusts, and need to dominate. Which dragons we choose to ride determines whether we bring great joy into the world or great sorrow. And remember, one may always change dragons. It reminds me of the great quote about, you know, the evil wolf and the good wolf and which one survives. Well, it's the one you feed. So the same is true for your dragons. On unicorns, unicorns are alive and well and contained within all those who will not forgo their innocence, stop seeing beauty everywhere and refuse to give up their magic. And uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I've completely forgotten my innocence because, I mean, my first thought when I read that today, that's the phrase that jumped out at me, to forego my innocence. I thought, oh, God, yeah, no, I'm completely jaded at this point in my life. But you know what? That's not true. I, I write romance, and I, I, I'm a happily ever after fairy tale believing, retelling kind of gal, so. I was going to say. I, I do. I come off sounding, you know, like Charlotte in Sex and the City. I have this sort of perpetual naivete I that I can't believe, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you definitely do the I whole, do. You do the I whole really innocence it's, thing. Which is funny because I write like really hot romance, but yes, you know that's it's not you know that's not what's necessarily meant by innocence. No, it's about no. that believing and that uh, that passion and that fun and. And I think that one of the things about that is, you know, you wear innocence like a red like like a wedding dress. It just may have a big black hem. Oh, a big black hem. <laughs> At least a red one, a little red, red designs and red, you know. Well, it could be a black one with red designs in it. I love that, a little brocade. There we go. There right. we go. <laughs> we'll be dress designing on our next episode of Dragon Unicorn and Other Creative Creatures. <laughs> <laughs> today's guest, uh, I've known today's guest for a long time. Uh, he, his artistic career actually started in writing, uh, where he started as a journalist and a writer uh, well before there was blogs and all of these other things. Uh, and he found that his artistry at some point started to shift. Uh, and it shifted from being just creating pictures with words to taking pictures. Where he fell in love with photography and has created uh, some truly astounding photography. Uh, he now goes and does shows with his photography. Uh, other things, and so he is currently actually working in as an editor. I'm going to read it right off his card because I don't try to memorize the unimportant things. <laughs> um, the, for the Wake, he's an editor for the Wakefield Item Company, and he edits several newspapers. And then in his spare time, he spends time uh, either making magic with his young son, who I know well, and uh, and or he is out there. Capturing the beauty in nature. So I want to welcome Bill LaForme. Bill, how are you? Good. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. Thank Good you. to have you here. It's nice to be here. So you, so the first thing we always like, because we always refer to the term uber creatives. So we know that you are a writer. Now, do you ever write fiction? No, because I'm not very good at character development or the plot line part, but a nonfiction is something different. Like, it's just this gift that I was sort of born, born with and which developed over time. Like, my first writing job, they basically gave me a couple of years to be a bad writer and to get practice. That was before the internet really took off. <laughs> That's a good point. People used to ask me time what I did for a Time to be a bad a writer. <laughs> yeah, there was no time. There, nobody even knew what an online journalist back was back in 1995. So I was sort of under the radar, just writing every day, getting a paycheck, and then suddenly, eventually, I guess, you know, I learned enough from my editor and 
got some practice, and we used to get into legendary arguments. I think sometimes some furniture got broken, but you know, it just that's passion. That's the artistic oh, passion. That, I was about to say. So. A few artistic differences. Yep. Oh, Sacrifice yeah. the furniture. Especially like 1 a.m. What you were saying is totally correct. I say that there are basically there's writers and then there's people who like to smile at people in a coffee shop. And the, the writer is more the one who's banging his head at 2 a.m. against the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have the bumps and bruises and, and yeah. dents in the wall to prove it. Okay, so now we've got to, we, we, we do these on-the-spot quizzes with each other. So you had artistic differences. I saw you as alive. He saw you as alive, and I saw, I saw him, him as, as dead. dead. And it's from Chicago. He had it coming. The cell block tango. <laughs> oh, we and, have an image. Oh, that's for all my of favorite you. picture of all time. Is it? Yep. So here's one of. So uh, so now I'm gonna have you describe the picture, but I wanna I wanna tell you to where where else does your creativity show up? Because we like to talk about uber creatives. Okay. So. Um, for example, I mean, my nature photography and then my writing, and I'm also doing some side writing right now just about like experiences in my life because I've had some fairly unique ones in many different areas, so now I'm just trying to maybe tie it all together in the form of a writing project. But this is like, this is my passion right here because it allows me to go out into the woods for three days. And this is on the back. I can't describe the peace of that night sitting on the Androscoggin River just sitting there, the full moon is coming up over here, the last minutes of sunlight are over there, mm. and you get this amazing, and then I went paddling into that little space in there until I couldn't go any further, and there's all these signs of animals everywhere, no humans, it's just, it's up in Errol, New Hampshire, about 30 miles south of the Canada border, wow. and I just can't describe the peace and quiet and the stars, it just so that picture makes me feel like I did that night when there was just such amazing peace and quiet and beauty around me. It's incredible. I mean, the, the water is like glass. Oh, it's, and that's the Androscoggin River. The, everybody who goes up to New Hampshire probably drives past it or over it at some point. Mm -hmm. So if you were to put um, a word or a four or five word sentence to that picture, and, and all, of, all of your f photography you have out and people can get, you know, you oh, yeah. sell it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what would be, if you were going to put a tagline on that picture, what would it be? I would have to call it mystical serenity. Uh, the best picture, the best compliment I ever got was from one of my best friends, and she told me that all of my photography looks like a mystical being could step out of it at any second. And I just thought, my God, that is so, not only what I kind of aim for, but just so beautiful of a thought, just such a compliment to my artwork. It is, and you know what? She's right. I mean, and that's a, it is a wonderful thought that you're capturing nature. I mean, this is a photograph. This is real. This is there. And yet, it does seem as though magic could happen mm -hmm. at any moment. And I strive for that. The pictures that I put up on the web are the ones that just feel like, you know, I don't go for your garden variety nature shot because I feel tremendous passion. I really want to protect the environment and I have like certain spiritual views about the environment. Like for example, I'm a follower of St. Francis of Assisi. I consider him, along with just being an incredibly like good and pious man, he was one of the earliest environmentalists in my opinion because he sort mm -hmm. of tied this idea into that we should protect that which we live in out of like not only a sense of respect, but just out of common sense. And that was 800 years ago, and he still speaks to us in some ways today. Ahead of his time, as every good artist should be. Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. So, I'm, I, so we're going to have fun for, for a minute, because this is Dragons and Unicorns. What tagline would you give this picture? If you oh were going to give this, a, if you were going to give this, do you mind that we do oh, this? Oh, no, no, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, I could do, you know, I think serenity is the first word that, that comes to mind. Um, and at the same time, the city girl in me is thinking, where's the Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, because you, know, you were talking about spending three days up there. And I, you know, and I could tell by the way you said it that it lights you up, mm -hmm. that it inspires you, that you, you know, can count the minutes till you can go back up there and do it again. Yep. And I think of spending three days, you know, up in the middle of this sort of area, it's something that would probably give me highs. You know, I, I'm city girl, I want noise and bustle and hustle. And so, and, but I do, I love these things for, for a moment. You know, I love knowing it exists. I love knowing it's there. But yeah, the, the where's the Wi-Fi is kind of me. <laughs> So, that's, so that would be your title, Where's the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Really? I'm serene for now, but where's the Wi-Fi? <laughs> it's, it's so gorgeous. I'm trying to think of like what kind of a, and as a writer, you know, as a fiction writer, my, my thought, and when she said, talked about the mystical creatures, I was thinking, what kind of book would I put that on? 
you know, and you could go in either direction. You could make it something fantasy, or you could make it you could make it dark, as well. You know, you can just put a small light in the corner, and you know, goodness only knows who lurks in the in the darkness, because it, it also gives you that there's a there's a depth to the those woods. That I sense that there's unending. only positive beings in there. Oh, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a depth to those woods. Those are dense woods, old trees. Yep. I look at it and I think that this is nature's Rorschach test. <laughs> it does. It has that sort of fold it in half and see where the paint sticks. Yeah. It uh, does. I, <laughs> I looked at it. Well, I looked at it at first and I went, oh, that's like inner journey into the void, beyond the darkness. And then I thought, stranger than real, stranger <laughs> than fiction, you yeah. know, because it's a real picture and yet there's so many nuances to it that would make you think that it was doctored or it was fixed or it was Absolutely. CGI. No, just and you don't out. do any of your stuff, that stuff to your photography. For some of my stuff, I'll clean it up, but this is not, this is what we got. This just came out. Yep. But then this I looked the at moment. it and I was like, it looks like the blots of the Rorschach's test. It does. So, so it's Because so of the reflection. So it's nature's Rorschach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyways. So um, how, now, how long have you been taking pictures? Because we're going to bring it up. We got a few of your pictures up, and we're going to go through all of them like this. All right. You know, so, let's have some fun with them. But. So uh, back in 2012, I, I had um, I've always been taking pictures. Like I worked at Yellowstone Park back in 1992, and I would take pictures all the time, and I would just share them with my friends and photo albums. There was no digital component to it back then. So one night in 2012, I was covering the selectmen's meeting in Linfield, Massachusetts. I was the editor of the Linfield Patch website at that point. And I just stopped in a field on the way home, and there was such beautiful sunlight. So I went around taking pictures, and I posted them on Linfield Patch the next day, and people went nuts for them. <laughs> so that whole summer, I went out like, into all the conservation spaces of Linfield, taking really beautiful pictures and saying, this is your town. And I'd spend like three hours out there. One time I got lost in the woods and had no water. I'm kind of prone to little things like that. I almost got <laughs> <laughs> Minor yeah, details. I almost got myself killed like a mile from shore on a kayak one time. And, but it's all, it makes for great stories for the it photos, does. too. And um, so basically, um, people loved these photos that I used to run on Patch, and then I got the idea that maybe, like, you know, there are some places where local artists can try out their work because I was aware of them from being a newspaper editor. And then, um, so I signed up for the Salem Arts Association, joined a couple of their art shows, and very soon was selling my photos on eBay and on Etsy.com and at the live art shows and so forth. And people have really responded very well when they see them. It's really hard as an artist. I call photography the world's most crowded swimming pool. Because like you jump in and there's like three thousand other people all in there just like you, so I mean considering how crowded it is and the fact that it's very part time for me, I feel I'm very happy with the reaction that people have had for my work and stuff. And although they don't always understand the environmental component, like I hate more than anything being at an art show and I'm sitting there and I just I'm in love with these pictures and then somebody comes up and they're like, so uh, what kind of camera do you use? And it's like, oh my God, technology is literally the last thing on earth I want to talk about. <laughs> and like. Uh, you know, why don't you come up and tell me about the weather, you know, and just kind of like, so I want to talk about my passion for these places. And some people get it because they share it. They come up and they're like, oh, my God, I used to go fishing there when I was young. And it's like, see, you get it. And kind of that's more what I go for is the people who have like emotional connections to the outdoors or to the specific places that I shoot. That's neat that you can, you know, that somebody has a memory that, you know, something you've done brings them back to right. a time and a place and a, a moment. Now, there was somebody that we had on uh, one of our Web of Light shows, Al Brandano, Al Brandano, and he does the voice library because he talks about the importance of voice. Mm -hmm. But you can actually submit pictures. Uh, it's a very interesting thing. If you didn't see it, you should check the, uh, the Web of Light archives. But the importance of voice, and so he will do things like Somebody can put pictures, old pictures on, and family members can call in and, and record it, and then other family members can listen to what they say. And I thought that would be fascinating for you to tell the stories of your pictures in audio. I was originally thinking word, because you're a journalist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I wonder if there would be something if you ever wanted to create files where people could, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not going to get into the, to business consulting over it. I have thought <laughs> about some kind of written word component. Uh, my friend that I mentioned, she's an exceptional poet, and we've thought at times about maybe adding some kind of something to it. But it, it's still swirling around up there in the ether, really. We don't have a set idea It's for a busy it. ether. Yeah, it is a bit of a when busy you're a ether. When you're an Uber creator, that, that ether yeah. is always. Absolutely. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, god, what was that, Saturday? No, that, you see, this is another problem. <laughs> 
<laughs> you see, I've actually got a lot of anxiety about climate change. And um, I took this picture, and basically one thing, I don't take very many pictures in the winter anymore because, let's face it, the snow disappears after like two hours typically. Mm. And, you know, I've got snowshoes I haven't used in three years. So, I mean, climate change literally freaks me out, more so that I have a two-year-old, not me, because I'm like a 45-year-old diabetic, so it's really not my problem for very long. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so like, yeah, but more so it keeps me up at night because of my two-year-old son and I'm worried about the sort of world that he'll inhabit. So, I mean, I don't get to take pictures like this very much anymore because it's often 45 degrees in January now. But this is the sort of thing I greatly enjoy walking through the woods and taking pictures like this. And it's not a political thing either. I'm very disappointed that half of America thinks it's like a political party thing when in reality it feels more like it should be kind of a common sense we live on a planet. We only have one of them. Therefore, yeah, common sense is so rare. It can oh be no, a yeah, I know. It's 2017, so yeah, there's no common sense per se. But you know, I, I still like to hold out hope. Well, you know, I'm going to put this out there. I just want you know, we we all tend to spiral at times into negativity about our own current world and about our current future generations and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that common sense has not been common since the beginning of humanity. Oh, no, this no. is nothing new. So, you know, we don't want to we don't want to give the impression that it it's suddenly it's, it's disappeared. A, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Most humans have never had it. <laughs> yeah, this also no. kind of gets into bearing witness. Like you can argue all you want politics with some nitwit on Facebook or something. But in reality, all I do is present a picture in somebody's heart. It's going to be stirred. Say, you know what? I really like that picture. I like that place. And in reality, the goal is to just create that little droplet of energy that says, you know what? I really like the outdoors. I like nature. That picture sort of inspires. You know, that's the sort of thing, as an artist, that's your best case scenario that you hope somebody comes around and sort of like, oh, I love the planet now from having seen these beautiful images of our planet. That's what you hope for. Whether you to do be it. The, well, eh. to be the seed that eventually becomes. Right. Yeah. So I'm just quietly bearing witness, not going to yap about politics with anybody. It's just, this is our beautiful planet, and I would maintain that I think it should be preserved and protected. Yeah. Okay. So, any, so uh, well, how would you title this? Just um, how about endangered ecosystem? <laughs> oh, you want to give it a shot? My my first thought was the the Robert Frost poem. Oh, you I know, love Robert the, Frost. the one where he's you know the the one that eventually becomes an I took the road less traveled, I believe. Whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village, love though it. he will not see me stopping here yes. to watch his woods fill up with snow. And this is like the greatest thing about being a New Englander. I mean, it's precious. We are blessed with being New Englanders who get this amazing. We do. Beautiful... Even sometimes driving, you know, there's areas where I live where. The trees bow in, and they bow even more when there's um, the snow on them. Um, there is a heaviness here. I mean, you can see that the, the branches are. There's a very wet snow. Yes, you can see that. This is, that's why I said, uh, you know, our April Fool's snow day um, it definitely reminds me of that. Just the, the weight of it, you know, is uh, there is there's a weightiness about it, but also just I love I love it when when nature kind of just seems like it paints everything, it frosts everything. Yes. The uh, I I want to call it after you're gone. Oh. That's a cool title. I like that. After you're gone, you know, who will remember snowy days like these after they're gone? Who will remember? The, the bend of the tree. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, I'm writing a poem in my head. Let's say, keep going, yeah. That's just, that was becoming poetry rapidly. Yes, yes, <laughs> I do that. Like, I'll just like compose on the spot all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, yes. certainly I, I have files, and we've discussed this, you know, what do you keep and what's your creative process, but I have files of images, you know, sometimes people, but sometimes something like this that is, a, they're, they are writing prompts, they're story prompts. Yeah. Um, short or long, you don't know when you start out, but, you know. Yeah, I've always found that there's 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 one main thing that is a story, poetry prompt, song prompt for me. Mm -hmm. Life. Just, just just that. Just life. Yeah. Just just life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see now, I love this picture. I I I saw that one coming in, and that one really grabbed me. So tell. Uh, this, Where is this that? is a strange one. I can't get to over me. the colors on the rocks. It's at the very tip of Plum Island. So you, it's oh, the okay. seven mile road that goes along Plum Island. You come to the very end of it, you come to this tiny little state park called Sandy Point State Reservation, and this is it. It's a beautiful little place to walk around. I've always wanted to sneak over there for a sunrise, basically, you know, but you got that seven mile road to, I guess, potentially bicycle down because you can't drive on it. 
And you know it's inexplicable to me. This is not one of my favorite photos, and yet it's one of my most all-time viewed photos since 2012. Consistently, every year, this one will be in the top three viewed photos on my Etsy shop. It sells very consistently, and um, it's not among my favorites, but people do really like it. And I think it's the colors of the rocks are surprising to them. There's a lot of algae, and it's in the sunlight, sunlight just yeah, right. Yeah, got, we've got fall colors, but a summery, spring kind of... Yeah, Setting. I think there's like a surprise component to it because people don't think about these species of algae necessarily, but it's just another scene it of New England. Possibly sleeping sea lions. They're out there, yeah. You know, it is, there's something almost uh, animal-like about the rocks because they don't just look, because they're so colorful, they don't just look like rocks. And Plum Island is a very special place. There's just something so photogenic about the place. I love Plum Island. I keep thinking like one of those rocks is actually like, not, not a hippo, obviously, because we don't like have hippos seal. around here, but yeah, there's something that's blended in. Okay, so give it a title. Um, Ocean Surprise. Ocean Surprise? Ocean Surprise. What do you think? Uh, this is like my match game. Can I be Brett? Yes, um, you can be Brett. They're coming know. out with a new match game. I heard. Um, sorry about the tangents. We do that oh, a no, lot no, here. No, no. I'm the king of the tangent. <laughs> um, yeah, there's something, uh, there's something, something about the word surprise, um, title surprise or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't get over the, just the different shades. I mean, there's like five, six shades of green and six or seven shades of red, and then there's golds, and, and yet they're rocks. You know, it's, it's sort of um, <sighs> unstill life. Unstill life? Unstill life. I want to call it moving. naturally unique. Mm. Now, I, almost, I, I was going to call it I am what I am, because <laughs> each one of them is like a personality it of its is. own. And there's a few that there that definitely strike me as drag queens. And a couple <laughs> of them look like they could just hatch. Uh, you know, like, yeah. like they're wearing, I mean, like that looks like the wig in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. That, I, love that uh, <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> the one over there. But... You know, but I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stick with. I would call this, you know, um, naturally unique. Yeah. Or uniquely natural. Or yeah, I like both actually. You can yeah. kind of do the. So let's bring another one on. Oh, I love that one. Hmm. Is that the same location as the first one? It looks like a same, similar color sky. So. so basically, I have a place that I go to. It's called Lake Mbagog State Park. It's half in New Hampshire, half in Maine, about 30 miles south of Canada. I go up to Errol, New Hampshire. I rent one of these islands out on the middle of the lake. $25 a night, and you have your own island. Like you can the rent? King of France I didn't know who knew you could rent an island. Yep. And there's like seven or eight of them you can rent for 25 bucks a night. You pay the rangers 80 bucks to transport you round trip. They drop you off on Friday. They'll come back and get you whatever day you want. Or whatever's you? left of you. Sorry, yeah. just kidding. And th th that's why I go out there, though. I like to cook steak tips for dinner, and there's bears out on the mainland. So um, you can cook oh, whatever you want you for go. dinner if you're on an island. And, don't be and not become dinner. Oh, we had wolves out there, too. I mean, there's real wildlife up there, but that's part of why I go there, because like, I, the tourism of the White Mountain region is very beautiful, and I'd probably sell more pictures if I went to all the places the tourists go. Of course, go. But, but... I feel more spiritually at home. And this is also the blue hour. This image is about an hour before sunrise. It's like absolute first light. I run out of my camera when I hear the, when I hear the first bird. That's when it's time to get up when you're in your tent for photography. And then you go back and sleep for like three hours at 9 a.m. Oh, good. So, I like that um, so on the island, you, you, you're sleeping in a tent? Oh, yeah. Yep. And this is taken uh, from an island that looks just like that one, about 100 yards across. One time I actually forgot my tent poles. When the ranger was driving off, I realized that my tent poles were back in my trunk on the mainland. So I actually had to fashion my own tent, kind of like tying it all together using an old fence and stuff. So it's good to kind of learn a little bit about, you know, you, you can't just go out there. You have to kind of know a thing or two about the outdoors and, you know. No, so you, so, so yeah. you rent the island to camp on. Yes. There's, there's no facility there. I, get a, I have a kayak that I rent and just all over the lake. And I got myself in trouble because the lake is seven miles long and two miles wide and a great big squall came up and just kicked up this tremendous surf when I was about a mile from shore. It took me a good six hours to get home that day. I had to stop and take refuge at this abandoned house for a while and found myself in several coves. And at it was one nature's point, version of rush hour. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I got stuck behind some huge rocks while big waves just pounded the rocks for like an hour. Oh and then gosh. as it was getting dark, I just, so you know how I psych myself up? 
just started yelling, no one's effing coming for you. And then I just started paddling. <laughs> like, I love it. No one's coming. Yep. Now that's a good title for that one. No, no but this is just, that's the blue hour. There's, there's, this picture depicts the blue hour. Blue hour. What do you think? I, I was thinking no distractions was. No distractions. No distractions. You know, there are times, as much as I joke about wanting my Wi-Fi and, um, and my city life, um, I do love the opportunity to just drop everything other than my identity as a writer or my identity as a creator and just be mm -hmm. focused right there. I don't have to be wife, mother, cook, chauffeur, any of the you know, other things, just fully present to creating. Um, that's what that makes me think about. Limitless possibilities in the key of blue. Mm, I like that. It's cool too. I like because it's the very beginning of the day. There are limitless possibilities That's at this true. time. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that. I like it with the idea of the key of blue. Yes. Yeah, that's cool too. I can't get over how blue the the, the blues you've captured, and I love the the cloud pattern. It, it looks like sponging. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This place is so serene that you literally hear the fish jumping around you like all over the place. They just it's one of those places you can out. actually hear your eyes blinking. <laughs> well, this would be, I, 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 I'm going to have to hit Bill up to borrow his tent, because I won't go tenting often enough to be worth it to buy one. Mm. But if he'll let me borrow his tent. Oh, I have a couple. I have a, uh, um, my fiance would love a weekend of kayaking and no technology and completely shutting down and stuff like that and just being out in nature. My phone no, dies about New York 20 minutes. Is where I'd rather Not stay. <laughs> Actually, the whole time I, I keep on thinking, I miss those city lights. That's the camera. Okay, can we, before we run out of time. Ah, and into another musical. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. People love that one because of the spiritual significance as well, that famous poem, The Footprints in the Sand and so forth. Of course, yeah. And it was a freezing cold day at Wingashig Beach. This is one of my first photos. And it just, people really like this one. One woman bought four copies of it in New Jersey to give to her friends. So, I mean, it was just kind of, like, I, I love this one, too. And it's just, it doesn't show much in the way of nature, but it shows something else that ties in very closely yeah, to nature. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's almost literally, like there's humans on half of it because you have the footprints. And it's clearly more than one person. A couple of women pointed out that there was dogs in it, like almost yep. like negative, like, oh, you disappointed me that like there's dog footprints in it. And it's like, well, actually, that's totally complete. It makes it more complete. You know, the yeah. Twilight Zone episode, there's the man, um, there's a man with his dog. He refuses to go into heaven because they're telling him that he can't bring his dog in with him. And then he walks down the road and they're like, oh, good thing you didn't go into the other place. Of course you can bring your dog in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind yeah. of like, it reminds me of that classic Twilight there Zone you episode. Go. Chris, yeah, so you had that on one side. Man and his dog. You know, there's no actual movement and yet there's a lot of movement. You have all the steps going forward and back and the swirl of the sand, the way it's built up, indicates the movement of water. The tide. Over time, yeah. Mm -hmm. and That'll all be covered. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so what's the title for it? I would just go with Footprints in the Sand because it ties in with that famous poem. I, I was thinking something along the lines of um, here for now because it's, it is, it's all going to disappear. It will be different in another moment. Because, you know, I do those, I used to, I've, I've actually stopped doing them because I've run out of time. I'll get back to them at some point. But you remember I used to do all those morning coffees where yes. I'd take all those pictures and I'd put them together and I'd put them out. And I did one where I was, did, and it was, it was like, this is hard sand. The one I did was pictures of footprints in like a soft sand mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So and I, and, but I remember writing the whole thing about and no matter how important we think our life is, it will all be washed away. Well, it's yeah. very you know. tra transient. That was transient. Yeah. Yeah, transient beauty. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I saw that scene from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure where they go back and talk to Socrates, and he's like, <laughs> "Yes, like sands through the hourglass." <laughs> <laughs> so These are the days of our lives. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we've just dated ourselves. So sorry about that. They're but... just having their fiftieth anniversary of being on the air. Oh my gosh! For those of you young folks who don't remember. It's Grandma's still on. stories. Um, yes, still please on. Google it because they were, they were. I did. I used to watch. Not Days of Our Lives. I was an ABC girl. But. ABC girl. So. Aww. That's also Plum Island. That's one of my most popular ones. And people, um, that also is one of my oldest, probably from 2012. 
And um, just once again, Plum Island is just a very special place. That's the town of Newburyport that you see off in the distance by the sunlight. And um, just I love the seagull. I assume it's setting, is that correct? Yes, it okay. is. And it's just once again, this is one of those things. I really love New England. I've been to 45 states and 12 countries. Holy and cow. I love New England almost more than just about any of them. So. That and, says something. Yep. So what's your title for that one? Just, um, oh, I don't know. Let um, me make him go first. It gives, gives, gives you more time. Gives me more time, I know. I know. <laughs> I agree. Yankee I Twilight. <laughs> what was that? Yankee Twilight. Yankee Twilight. I like that. I think because we had that random trollery thing, you know, the fishermen coming yep. back. Except <laughs> as a parent and a Pixar fan, all I can think of with the seagull is the Finding Nemo seagulls that are always going, yeah. mine, 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 which are so accurate for what they sound like. Um, I don't know. I th there's something about it. That, I don't know. I was thinking like still more to come because even though it's sunset, you know, somebody's coming home from work and there's a part of his day that's actually just starting. Yep. You know, his time with his family and stuff like that. I love the one seagull, though. I mean, the, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole story of the seagull going, oh, thank God, nobody else is around squawking at me. You know, he's <laughs> Zen seagull. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I keep on seeing it. I, I look at this picture, and all I can see is I, I personify each of the, of the drift of the, of the piles. Mm -hmm. So I just look at him, and then it's like hanging out with my buddies. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> just hanging out with my buddies. We're just here, just chilling, waiting for the sun to go down. And then there's this like almost tree beard image of you know <laughs> them all going for for happy hour. Yeah, yeah, sort of exactly. walking out. Yeah. First rounds on me. Walking. <laughs> thump thump thump. <laughs> tree beard. That's great. Can we have the one with the two mountains like on either side. You mean like yes. that one? You mean like this one? <laughs> yes. I love this yeah, one. I love when it works out like that. <laughs> and this is one of my newest pictures. <clears throat> I sat on the beach for two hours. So literally, I'm standing um, about 100 yards away from where I took this picture. And the guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, um, so do you know you're on a nude beach? And I'm like, no. And the guy just like strips down to nothing right in front of me and just casually jumps in the well, water. Well, that's funny because that's the first thing I saw. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go over to this other beach where people hazard. aren't naked. So I just sat there for like two hours and totally got this. I have like a hundred photos showing the sky increasingly getting dim. And then like at the end, it's just this. And I had hoped actually to get some sunlight, but the sun actually sets behind the left one. And one cool thing about this, both mountains in this picture, plus the lake, were all mentioned in Robert Frost poems. Oh my, yeah. so where, where was the location of this? Uh, this is Lake Willoughby in Vermont. It's um, about 200 miles north of Boston. I forget the name of the town. Uh, Linden State College, so it's near Linden, Vermont, kind of over, oh, um, over the Vermont line from New Hampshire. Linden. And uh, then also on the right, there's a little historical moment. Rogers Rangers apparently fled from French soldiers during the uh, French and Indian War, moving along the lake shore on the right-hand side of the mountain. So these are little things I pick up when I travel. I always look into the history of a place that I go to. And um, I like to find those little details, and sometimes I'll share them with people. Well, yeah, it's cool to know kind of like who came before, you know, what, what did this place mean to somebody else, and you know, did it, did it, it influence somebody or change somebody else? So, what are you calling this, Bill? Let's go with like a journey within, because it's so dark. It's a setting sun. It's like you kind of don't know what's up there, but you need to get on a little boat and find out. You know, it's kind of like, and it's. Darkness is coming, but I don't have a problem with darkness. It's just the absence of uh, physical light. <laughs> can I go with cleavage? <laughs> you can if you want. And it's you the know Rorschach what's thing. Yeah, we're back to the Rorschach thing. But the other thing about it, you know, cleavage is its own, to cleave is its own uh, synonym and antonym. It's its own antonym. To cleave something is both to bring it together and to, like, a cleaver, which is to separate it. So these, you can't tell if these two mountains are over time moving together or if they are moving apart. I'm guessing they're probably moving apart, but um, but they are. They're sort of forever together and never touching and never, you know, reaching each other. And... Okay. That lake is just beautiful to swim in. By the way, you literally feel the cleanliness of the water on your body. Mm. There was uh, there was a time in my life when I lived on Cleve Street. <laughs> Just, just, just As an Anne of, Anne of Cleves. It's uh, one of Henry's wives, I believe. Um, yeah, and she brought him together, and he 
split him apart. Yes, <laughs> he did. Okay, so we're gonna go really crazy here. And the bird and the fish. I see it. I do. I was thinking that where the reflection there's a oh beak. Oh my god. There's yeah. a beak, and then there's I, I a. I feel like this is a bird and a fish talking about you know like hanging out talking about the lake. That is wicked cool. I'm like, yep, this is just the bird and the fish. Mm-hmm. You know. In uh, one of the Cinderella retellings, um, uh, Ever After, the one with Drew Barrymore and Angelica Houston, um, she wants to be with the prince. Of course, she's a peasant. And she's talking to another man, and he says, you know, you're his match. She says, a bird may love a fish, but where would they live? Yeah. And apparently, right there. Right there. Like Willoughby. Lake. Oh, uh, by the way, Willoughby's uh, second Twilight Zone reference of the interview. There's another famous reference. Uh, uh, Next stop, Willoughby. Willoughby. <laughs> Next up, Willoughby, yeah. This has that level of peacefulness that uh, Willoughby from the show. That he wants, yes. Have you seen that one, Next up, Willoughby? It's, he's a, a completely stressed, overworked worker. And um, he keeps accidentally showing up at Willoughby. The, the train keeps stopping there, but nobody knows it. And of course, eventually, he gets out and leaves his whole life behind mm. to be in this little place. Uh, Fire in the sky. That's um, Singing Beach in Manchester, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. I know that one. And I stood there for like a good hour. You know, I always like to get there a little early, and it's like, oh, there's a little hint of light. That's what I'm here for. And then like an hour later, you realize that this is actually what you came for. <laughs> a little bit cold. Um, but, you know, kind of um, to you out there with your thoughts. There's sometimes a one guy will show up with a dog, like, you know, that kind of deal. Yep. Nice and quiet. I like it out there especially in the early morning hours. I'm not much of an early riser, but once I do get up and out there, I kind of, I like my solitude, you know? Which is ironic because I talk to people and interview them for a living, but um, I greatly like my solitude. <laughs> That's um, why you like your solitude. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tremendous loner, it. but yeah, I have to go talk to a bunch of people later. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, so you're calling it fire in the sky. I was fire in the sky. You know, I always, is, I always find it interesting that, you know, the sky is blue and sand is brown, and, and the truth is, well, maybe most of the time, but I've seen fully pink skies. I've seen purple skies. This one, I mean, this one has bands of blue and pink and yellow and a little orange is the pink and the yellow. It's a little purple. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is so much more than, you know, those first eight Crayola crayons. This one was a new, last year I basically um, didn't make a lot of art, but I felt like I got a lot of really good bang for my buck because a lot of the stuff that I went out and shot did come out, you know, the Lake Willoughby one, this one. I can appreciate that. There are times when I don't feel like I publish much, but I feel like what published or what came to me or what was accomplished was, right. was more than I anticipated, even if it isn't quantity. And it's not even about quality, it's just about this is right. Right. I mean, I was prolific in 2012, just making stuff like crazy and going camping. But then it's like, well, I'm trying to work on a master's degree, and I'm a father now of a very young kid. And yeah, I do that a life newspaper. thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm doing what I can. But, and also, like I mentioned, like, you're in a bit of a funk. Like, I'm in a funk half the year because I'm like, Jesus, it's 45 degrees in January. And, like, even if I could find a good picture, I don't necessarily want one because I'm just, like, despondent about what's going on out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it, so. it definitely affects. People definitely work on a... A seasonal scale, whether they realize it or not. What time of year was this taken? This one would have been, it was cold out there. Let's say it was, oh, uh, um, would have been like the fall, I reckon. Okay. Maybe the early spring, but I remember so, it being 40, 30 degrees out. So, so I'm going to very quickly, and then we're going to wrap this up. It made me think of a poem I wrote called Autumn Dawn. Okay. Oh. And it goes, raspberry sherbet in a blueberry sky. Oh, that's awesome. Glowing through the ancient fingers who in fragility reach for the sky. Fall all but gone, winter all but here. Morning windows, sparkly milk glazed surface. People scuttle, watching their breaths, running from the cold, running to keep warm. No leaves, no snow. Fall all but gone, winter all but here. I wrote that in 1978, but I uh -oh. saw that and I thought it is. There's the, res there's the, sh yeah, the raspberry really sherbet nice. in the. Nice. Yeah. Raspberry sherbet in a blueberry sky. I really like that line a lot. It That's is really perfect. Good. Yeah. Well, we are wrapping down. Bill, you, you have stuff on Etsy, and you do art shows, and you're all over. And I have editing. a Facebook page. All you have to do is look up Bill LaForm Nature Photography on Facebook, or you can find me on Etsy. I would just Google Bill LaForm Nature Photography, and it'll bring you to Pinterest, Etsy, and Facebook. So. Wonderful. There you go. 
Well, with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of Dragons, Unicorns, and Other Creative Creatures. We'll see you next time. Yeah. And remember, we, as creative beings, we get to finger paint with our creativity. You're not just a photographer. You're not just a writer. You're not just anything. You're just everything. Namaste. Thank you.